February 2022, and I've headed to the home of the oldest university in the English-speaking world, the city of dreaming spires that is Oxford. At the junction of the Thames and Cherwell rivers, the area around Oxford was originally settled by the Saxons as Oxenford, a portmanteau of Oxen's Ford. At this location, the Thames splits into many shallow channels, offering a good crossing location for people, goods and animals, and therefore an important place to control. A frontier town at the borders of Mercia and Wessex, raided by the Danes and damaged by the invading Normans in 1066, who built an impressive castle to assert their dominance over the city. But by the next century, the dominance of the gown over the town would start. The first mentions of the University of Oxford are in the 12th century, though there is evidence of teaching as far back as 1096, marking it out as the first university in the English-speaking world, just eight years after the first teaching founded the University of Bologna in Italy. Since then, the city and the university have been linked, even if at times that relationship has been strained. Things got so bad in 1209 that several scholars fled Oxford following the lynching of two students by the town citizens and set up shop in Cambridge, founding that university. Oxford is a collegiate university, with students and lecturers being members of a specific college, even if that college doesn't teach the subject they're studying. Each college is in itself its own small university with lecture rooms, halls, libraries and all the other facilities we'd expect of a university. With the bulk of the colleges having been created before the English Civil War, and for a lot of that time during periods of conflict between town and gown, they are, to a large part, their own small private kingdoms, very much modelled on a monastic layout. The walls of New College being a great example of the colleges closing themselves off to the outside world. And the Bridge of Size, or Hartford Bridge as it's officially called, links two different parts of Hartford College without needing to leave for security of the college lands. With each college having chapels, quads and towers, from above it's easy to see where Oxford gets its moniker of the Town of Dreaming Spires from. And the best place to take in those views is from the top of Carfax Tower. The actual name of the tower is St Martin's Tower, and it's the only remaining part of the 12th century St Martin's Church. But it sits on Carfax, the very centre point of the city, where the east-west and north-south main roads through the old city meet, which is where it gets its more commonly used name from. From the top of the tower, just 99 rickety steps up from ground level, there are amazing views out over the city and surrounding countryside, northwest towards the Cotswolds and south towards the Chilterns and Wessex Downs, and of course down the main streets of Oxford to the college buildings of the university. Not the oldest, not quite the largest, and not quite the wealthiest, but one of the most famous of Oxford's colleges is Christchurch. Refounded in 1546 by Henry VIII, shortly after the Reformation on a college previously set up by Thomas Wolsey, Christchurch houses not only the university, but also the city's cathedral and the seat of the Bishop of Oxford. 
with towers designed by Sir Christopher Wren, a great dining hall that was used as a seat of the English Parliament assembled by Charles I during the English Civil War and has subsequently doubled for Hogwarts, an alumni that includes 17 archbishops, 13 British prime ministers, scientists such as Robert Hooke, and mathematician and author Charles Dodson, also known as Lewis Carroll. It's fair to say the college has had a significant impact on the culture, politics and history of both the city and the country. As you would expect from one of the great seats of learning, the city has a large number of museums, many of which are attached to the university, such as the Natural History Museum, which houses the university's paleontological, geological and life collections. and the attached Pitt Rivers Museum, which houses the university's archaeological and anthropological collections. Perhaps the most famous of the university's museums, and certainly the oldest, given it's the oldest public museum in Britain and the second oldest university museum in the world, behind the Kunstmuseum Basel, is the Ashmolean Museum. Originally created from the Cabinet of Curiosities that Elias Ashmole gave to the university in 1677, the collection has expanded, grown and relocated over the centuries. Its current Victorian home opened in 1845 and has subsequently been extended multiple times, adding in new galleries and expanding space to the ever-growing collection, which continues to focus on art and archaeology from around the globe. The original Ashmolean Museum building, which opened in 1683, still exists and today it houses the History of Science Museum, making it the world's oldest surviving purpose-built museum building, even if the museum occupying it has changed. The museum houses a number of important scientific artefacts, from some of the earliest astrolabes and telescopes through to a model of the Oxford University developed COVID-19 vaccine, via the bedpans that penicillin was first developed in, and a blackboard used by Einstein when he gave a guest lecture. Away from the hustle and bustle of the centre of the city and the colleges, the University of Oxford Botanic Garden is the oldest such garden in Great Britain and one of the oldest scientific gardens in the world. Originally founded in 1621, it's sited on land next to River Cherwell belonging to Morton College, which had previously been the Jewish cemetery until a 13th century bout of anti-Semitism. 
for walled gardens, medicinal beds and glass houses provide a pleasant space to relax in away from the city centre, whilst exploring different habitats and species. Oxford is located at a strategic point of the UK rail network with direct connections to London via the Great Western Main Line into London Paddington and the Chiltern Line into London Marylebone. Cross-country trains provide frequent links to Bournemouth, Southampton, Birmingham and Manchester. There are fast and frequent bus links to both London Heathrow and London Gatwick airports as well as direct rail connections to Birmingham Airport 